Good afternoon, dear students. Happy New Year to all of you. This afternoon, our lecture will focus on hypothesis testing and statistical tools used in inferential statistics. This is very important because by next school year, you might be required to come up with your own researches or thesis. Okay, so please uh, pay attention very well. I hope you will get a good grasp of the different statistical tests after our discussion this afternoon. Okay, so I have set the following targets for this afternoon. Okay. Number one, we have stating the null and alternative hypothesis. This is not new to you. We have had exercises on this when we were in high school, when we were in staff class. And then identified the appropriate statistical test considering type of data and the research questions. Okay, so what, what dictates the type of um, test to be used in a particular research or a study? of data and the research questions and I'll be showing some um, SPSS outputs how do we interpret result of analysis from SPSS but I will not be uh, discussing about how to conduct or how do we go about testing, Z-test, and all various SPSS but I'll just be presenting to you printouts or um, outputs after subjecting data to um, statistical treatment using the software SPSS. Okay, so let's review. Review um, from our previous discussions, we made mention about the two branches of statistics, descriptive and inferential. So you know very well that when we speak of descriptive statistics, okay, from the word describe, Okay. These are statistical procedures used for summarizing, organizing, graphing, and describing data. So the measure you get from, uh, should I say, uh, measures under descriptive statistics are your averages, your averages, your mean, mean mode, and then your measures of variability, measures of dispersion. While inferential statistics um, cover statistical procedures that allows one to make generalizations about the population on the basis of sample data. Inferential. So we estimate a parameter. Okay, you know what a parameter is? It's a measure of the population. Okay, so we estimate a parameter of from a sample, okay, a part, on the examining a part of the population because we cannot also take uh, the population for practical reasons. Okay, so we only take a portion of the population and use that portion or sample to estimate the parameter. That's one concern of inferential statistics, estimation, and the other is making inferences or generalizations about the population from the sample, okay, of hypothesis testing, okay. Uh, so, you are familiar with uh, this illustration, okay, with these graphics showing two, bits, two, two circles rather one big circle consisting of the larger set and a small circle or the smaller set or sample okay. so the sample is obtained from the population and from the sample we establish or we determine the statistic and that is used to estimate the Parameter. Now, the validity of the parameter, the validity of the measure, depends upon how you selected the sample. So, again, the larger population or the larger set, <clears throat> the quality of uh, the observations, okay, this is usually represented by capital letter N for population. And 
the sample size for small letter and for the sample. And there are techniques by which we could identify or determine the members of the smaller set. Something techniques we could remember. Okay? So, like what I said a while ago, the estimates, the validity of your estimate depends upon okay, how you selected your sample. Okay, so from the sample, we make inferences and generalizations about the population. That's what we do when we have, uh, subject our data to hypothesis testing. Okay. What are the types of samples? The types of samples according to okay, how they are selected, probability and non-probability sample. You know very well that a sample is a small portion of the population. Now when you say probability sample, it's a sample in which uh, it is selected from the population by means of some systematic way. Okay. Every element of the population has an equal chance of being included in the sample. Probability. Okay. Every unit in the population or every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected in the sample. Okay. The, the other name for probability sample is your random sample. Okay. Random sample. Whereas for non-probability sample, there is no system in selecting the sample. Maybe out of convenience, I will just include in my um, respondents, for example, a friends who have telephones so that I won't be going places anymore interviewing. Convenience you. Okay, that's non-probability sampling. The selection is dependent on the situation. Tayo mga kapitbahay, kung na lang kasi silang malaki, that's non-probability sampling. Okay? Uh, probability of selection is unknown. Okay? The probability of selection of the units in the population is unknown. Whereas for probability sampling, every unit in the population, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Now, there are several techniques under each, okay, under probability and non-probability. For probabilistic sampling, we have the following four, although there are others, I have only listed four here. Simple, random sampling, you know this very well, yung draw lots na ginagawa natin. Write out your names in pieces of paper, put them in a fishbowl, and then, okay, pick out. That's a uh, draw lots, right? That's simple random sampling. Each member has an equal chance of being selected. It is also called lottery or raffle type of sampling. So you can do it that way, or you can make use of computers, okay? Or uh, the computer can generate random numbers. That's it. That's how we can make use of simple random sampling. Next, systematic sampling. What about systematic sampling? One chooses a starting point and then select every eight element in the population. So I will start by picking out any member at random. So wala mo nang rule any. Okay? So, I would select any member at random. Then, after that, um, I would select every kth element. This is predetermined by your population size and your sample size. So, maybe every fifth element thereafter. So, I, okay, I may illustrate it. Okay, in this manner. So, if this is your population, and these are the units or the observations, just to show you how systematic sampling is done. 
Okay, so select at random the first element. Okay, let me cross out. For instance, this will be my first element. And then every k element. Every k element. Yeah, every k element in the population. So let's say every third element from here. One, two, three, cross it out. One, two, three, cross out. One, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is systematic random sampling. Systematic sampling. All of them are, <coughs> sorry, are probability samples, by the way. All of them are probability sampling techniques. Systematic sampling. And then we have the third, which is stratified sampling. Strata. Okay, from the word stratum. So the population is subdivided into at least strata that share the same characteristics like gender then a sample is drawn from each stratum okay from each stratum so for stratified the population is divided into subdivided into groups okay and each group is called stratum and then from each stratum okay samples are selected so, for example, to illustrate, um, stratified sampling, okay, so the population is divided into three groups. Each group is called stra stratum. Okay? And then from each stratum, the samples are selected. So, kung tatlo, kunwari lang, just for an example. So, for uh, the first strata, this may be selected. Okay? Kunwari, ito ang select. Okay? So, ito. Sa pangalawang stratum, pwede si last element, and then the third strat, stratum, pwede si third element. So, the samples came from each of the three okay, strata. Okay? So, all strata are represented. Now, how different is stratified sampling from cluster sampling? Take note that the two involves grouping or dividing your population into groups. So when you speak of cluster sampling this time, cluster, okay, the population is subdivided into subgroups called clusters. A random sample of n clusters is selected and their elements are completely enumerated. So let's go back to the illustration. So instead of picking out, instead of me picking out, okay, um, samples from each strata, okay, from each cluster, from each group, I will just have to select one of the groups, okay, one of the groups. So, for instance, okay, let me choose the middle. After choosing the, that cluster, the middle cluster, all of its elements are listed in the sample. Okay, so yun yung difference ng dalawa. So going back, sabi niya, okay, all their elements are completely enumerated. So that's the difference between uh, stratified sampling and cluster sampling. We proceed to the next, which is the main focus of this afternoon's uh, lesson, hypothesis testing. This is not your first time to hear of hypothesis testing because you encountered this also when you were in high school. And uh, if I would ask you now to define a hypothesis, probably you might answer this way. It's an educated guess, yes? Uh, usually, ganun nga sagot mo mas high school tayo, ano? What is hypothesis testing? 
hypothesis testing is the process of making okay, making an inference or a generalization on a population but using the results of a study on samples. So we make generalizations about the population but we study samples. Okay? Drawn from the population. A hypothesis is a statement about the parameter. You know what a parameter is? It's a measure of the population. It mean, okay, or a distribution of a population, proportion of a population. So, hypothesis. Okay, so when we say then, there's a hypothesis, we make generalizations about the population on the basis of samples. Okay? Studying samples. And you know that there are two types of hypothesis. The null hypothesis, which is represented by H sub O, and the alternative hypothesis, which is represented by H sub A. The null hypothesis, null. You know what null means? Wala. Walang, wala. Walang diferensya. Walang pagkakaiba. It's a statement of equality. Okay? It's a statement of no difference between sample means or proportions or no difference between a sample mean or a proportion, population mean or proportion. It's a statement of equality. The status quo. Whereas HA, the alternative hypothesis, is the opposite. Okay? That which contradicts our null hypothesis. It is a claim about the population that is contradictory to HO. And what we conclude when HO is rejected. Now, these two hypotheses, these two types of hypotheses are mutually exclusive. Okay, what do we mean by that? There should be no common elements between the two. Mutually exclusive. Okay? Once again, your null hypothesis is a statement of equality. Equality, however, in some cases, it could be greater than or equal to. Basta may equal. Okay? Or less than or equal to. Your HA, if HO is equal to, then HA is not equal to. Or greater than or less than. Pwede yan. Okay? Not equal to or greater than or less than. Okay? If your HO is greater than or equal to, then your HA is less than. Okay? Exact opposites. Yes? If your HO is less than or equal to, then your HA is more than or greater than. Now, let's try formulating hypothesis for the family. Okay, number one, historical data shows that a Filipino consumes 100 kilograms of rice annually on the average. Okay, so here we have a keyword, you know, average. A researcher is interested to find out if it has increased today. Okay, take note, a while ago, we have the following less than, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Okay, so let's proceed. What is the um, population? Ano yung population natin sa number 1? And what is our parameter? Population here is Filipinos. Okay? Filipinos. What about the parameter? What is that estimate of the population that we are interested about? Or the researcher rather, the researcher is interested about. It's their average. They average rice consumption annually. That's the mu, mu yon, because that's a we're talking of population. So for example number one, our mu, our parameter rather, our parameter, we 
there is mu merong tinu tayo dyan average mu which refers to rice consumption our parameter is mu which refers to rice consumption and with average or average average with rice consumption lang. mu you know that the greek letter mu is for mean of the population so rice consumption and with the and our population is Filipinos. Okay, now stating our HO and HA from here, look for clues, look for keywords. I have underscore increase today. This is the claim of the researcher. The researcher would like to test or is interested in finding out if the consumption has increased from 100, okay, which is the status quo, Meron ng clue. So that means your okay, uh, accepted fact is mu is equal to 100 kg. And the uh, researcher would like to take, okay, would like to test or to find out whether this has already increased. So that means our mu is greater than 100. That's our alternative hypothesis okay so this could also be i would be acceptable okay lang naman mu is less than or equal to 100 kg okay so any of them for as long as the two are mutually exclusive walang common element okay now we proceed to the second uh, situation. Okay, second case. A researcher is interested in finding out whether at least 80% of the students of CSU are attending online classes. So let's okay, uh, look into the population and that parameter once again, just like what we did in the previous, going back to the previous, what did we say? The parameter, or should I say, the um, uh, population is Filipinos. Okay? Lahat ng Filipino. Ang parameter natin of interest is the mean or average rice consumption. So let's do the same for number two. For number two, what do you think is the population here? Okay, let me underscore yeah, the population. CSU students. Okay, so the population is CSU students. And what about the measure that you would like to test or the researcher is interested about? What measure? What parameter? What is that parameter? Okay, proportion. Yan na, 80%. Means proportion or a percentage of students who are attending online classes. Okay, so this is our population, students of CSU. Okay, but are we talking about mean here in the second? No, it's a proportion this time, or percentage. Proportion of students of CSU who are attending online classes. So how shall we state this? Okay, HO and HA once again. HO and HA. But, like what I said, what is our parameter here? Ano yung measure in which the researcher is interested about? Proportion. Hmm. So, instead of mu, when do we use mu? Mu kapag mean. Okay? If it's percentage or proportion, then P. P refers to, okay, proportion or percentage of, can you read this, CSU students who are attending
or attending online classes. Okay, so this is our parameter. So we are ready to state H O N H A. But again, look for clues on how you will state your H O N H A. Kani now we okay underscore the word increased. This time at least eighty percent. At least eighty percent. How do you understand at least eighty percent? What do we mean by that? This means 80 and above, correct? The proportion could be equal to 80 or equal to or more. So that means our H of will be P proportion is equal to or greater than 80%. Okay? Convert this into decimal, it's done. So that is our uh, null hypothesis. What then is our alternative hypothesis? Okay, so P is less than 0. Okay. So those are the set of hypotheses for number 2. We proceed to the next, number 3. Okay, number 3. A medical, okay, a medical researcher, or medical researchers rather, Claim that the mean, mean, meron, mean body temperature of healthy adults is not equal to 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so what is the population here? Population here is healthy adults. What is the parameter? A new measure. What is that measure of the population that the researchers are interested in? the mean okay mean body temperature okay so our parameter is mu mean body temperature of healthy adults okay so mu is mean body temperature of healthy Adults. Okay? And our population has the adults. So now we are ready to state H O and H A. Okay? So H O, did it say equal to? Did it, did it say greater than? Less than? Wala naman. So we proceed to writing our H O this way. H O is equal to 90. 8.6 degree Fahrenheit and HA mu not equal to 98.6 degree Fahrenheit although it's already stated here of oh, not equal to. So that's the claim of the medical researchers. They would like to, okay, to find out or to prove their claim that the temperature, mean body temperature of healthy adults is not equal to 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? H. Now we proceed to Excuse me for a while. Nawala yung video ko. Nakikita nyo na? Sino wala sa screen kanina? Now, number 4. We proceed to number 4. Drivers who use cell phones have a car crash rate greater than 13% rate for those who do not use cell phones. Okay? So, this one again speaks of proportion, probability, Okay, so our HO, HO and HA from here are, ayan, 
greater than. So, may clue kayo. Greater than. So, P is greater than 0 0.13. And therefore, its alternative or the null hypothesis is P less than or equal to 0 0.13. Okay? So, exact opposite. So, this is how we state hypothesis. The null and alternative hypothesis. So, from the hypothesis, we could determine, particularly our alternative hypothesis, we could determine the type of test, three hypothesis test situation. So, depending upon your HO and your HA, okay? Depending upon your HO and HA. If your HA, the alternative hypothesis is a statement of non-equality, not equal to, not equal to, and your HO is equal to, then that one requires a two-tailed test. Two-tailed, okay? Two-tailed test. If your alternative hypothesis is stated this way, the population mean is greater than K, okay? Mu is greater than K, then this is right tail, is greater than. Okay? Right tail. Nasa ng tail niya? Sa right. Okay? Greater than. Mu, greater than K. Right tail test. And then if left tail, for mu less than K. Mu less than K, it's a left tail test. Or to better understand that, let's look into the illustrations. Directional hypothesis expresses one direction, one tail. So, alin mo yung mga one tail? Yung right tail at saka yung left, uh, left, left tail. Yung mga ang HA ay mu greater than uh, a specific value, mu less than a specific value, or proportion, population proportion less than population proportion greater than the same greater than less than these are directional okay directional they express direction and the test okay arising from it is one to the test so kaya nito so the rejection region is only on the left side ito divides the normal distribution into into two regions. We have here the rejection. Okay? Rejection. This is the rejection region. And this is the acceptance. Okay? Yan. So, one tail dito. Ito lang yung rejection region. So, one tail yan. Left tail dito. Okay? Pag naman, ito, right tail test ito. Ito yung rejection region. So that's the difference. Rejection region and acceptance. Okay, for the traditional Z-test, okay, if uh, you make use of the traditional method of hypothesis testing, di ba meron tayong tabular value? Yan. Sa tabular value ito, the critical value. Okay? Critical value. And the computed value, yes? So, if your computed Z value falls here, and dito siya, if your computed Z value is here, then it falls under the acceptance region. That means you have to accept your null hypothesis. Or, okay, if your uh, computed Z value falls under the acceptance region, accept the null hypothesis. Okay? And when the computed Z value falls here, okay, falls uh, along the tail, then reject your null hypothesis. Next. For non-directional two tail, there are two rejection regions. Okay, one on the left and one on the right. So, dalawa. Kaya, if you could recall, meron kayong, if F computed, absolute value of computed uh, test statistics, bakit absolute value? Kasi pwede 
شم سالف پرسا لایت دیپرسیون. Okay. So he built one rejection region along the left and one rejection region along the right. So this is when your alternative hypothesis is a statement of non-equality. Yung kanina, less than or greater than. Now we move on to the next. Okay, so I made mention about critical value kanina. Critical value is any value that separates the critical region. Okay, critical region where we reject the null hypothesis and from the values of the test statistic that the do not lead to rejection of the null hypothesis the sampling distribution that applies and the significance level alpha so critical value next statistical errors these are concepts related to hypothesis testing type 1 error when is this committed type 1 is the mistake of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is Totoo namang walang difference, pero di-reject mo. Okay, so you are committing type 1 error. And the symbol for uh, the probability of committing type 1 error is your alpha. Alpha is used to represent probability of a type 1 error. Next, meron din type 2 or beta error. It's the mistake of failing to reject the null hypothesis when it is false. Mali yung null hypothesis mo, pero hindi mo na-reject. That's type 2 error. And the symbol for uh, probability of committing type 2 error is beta. So, alpha error and beta error. So, in tabular form, the statistical errors could be represented in this manner. The facts are HO is true. HO is true and you accepted it, then the decision is correct. Okay? When HO is true, that's the, the truth is, HO is true, but you rejected it, then you committed a type 1 error. Next, if the alternative hypothesis is true, yet you accepted it, true. Okay? Tama. Then you accepted it, then that's type 2 error. Okay? Or fail to reject the, the reject or should I say you accepted the HO. Now, if HA is true, okay, HA is true, and re you rejected, the decision is reject HO, that's a correct decision. The decision is correct because HA is true. Okay? And then you rejected your HO, which means you accepted the HA because it's true. The decision is correct. Now, the this could be likened to a court trial. Okay? Uh, the facts are the person on trial is innocent. Okay? The person on trial is innocent. And what's the decision of the judge? Acquit the innocent person. Okay? Acquit. Remember that a person is presumed to be innocent unless proven guilty. So if there is enough evidence to prove that he is guilty, he can, okay, or to convict. Now, innocent, that's the truth. And the judge acquitted that person, then the decision of the judge is correct. Okay? Or if the jury may be. If the person is innocent, yet convicted, decision of the court is convict that innocent person, then type 1 error is committed. Next, the fact is the person on trial is guilty. Okay? Guilty, yet in a quit, type 2 error is committed. Next, the fact is the person on trial is guilty. Convict, ano, decision. Tama. Okay, so decision is correct. Now, another analogy, uh, it can also be likened to, you know, uh, 
let's say uh, there is this test test medical exam that diagnose that that uh, is capable of diagnosing the existence of a certain disease okay parang covid testing siguro ganun okay so it's a uh, medical procedure that allows one to diagnose existence and non-existence of a disease so for instance okay um the truth is it in facts the facts are the following yung tao walang sakit the person um, does not have that particular disease yet he was diagnosed to be having it okay using that particular test the test revealed that the person uh, or diagnosed the person to be having that disease not having sorry not diagnosed pala not having that disease where in fact that wala naman talaga yung sakit so that decision is okay 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 however when a person has that disease yet undiagnosed not diagnosed then type 1 error is committed okay type 1 and what is the possible consequence yan irreparable damage could, could be done to the person kasi nga meron siyang sakit pero ang diagnose next uh, walang sakit pero na diagnose error yun wala siyang sakit that's the disease no disease okay yet he was diagnosed to be having that disease type 2 error okay so consequence the person could be treated but not harmed by the treatment whether in harm okay next fact is the person has the disease and he was diagnosed okay decision is correct okay now we move on to the next these five exercises on stating the null and alternative hypothesis will be part of your assignment so maybe skip this portion now so now that you know how to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis we can now proceed to Okay, deciding whether to accept or reject our null hypothesis. But what what is our basis? On what basis will I okay, reject or fail to reject my null hypothesis? Okay, before we look into that, let's first review the steps in hypothesis testing. The p value method. I won't be discussing with you the tr traditional method that one which uh, involves manual computation of z of p um, compare the tabular value from the computer value hindi na kasi marami na tayong uh, statistical software so you to avoid uh, the lengthy computation of your f test t test z test okay and must reliable reliable kasi one mistake in your computation would affect the rest or the succeeding parts of your of your solution if you do it manually okay so step number one h o and h a stating the hypothesis step in number two the statistical tool okay what tool will i make use of what test will i make use of considering my data type okay number three the significance level now usually for social researches um, alpha is at five percent but for medical researches one percent but a very minimal error kasi buhay ang kasalanan for medical researches like for instance testing of medicine okay so significance level usually is at five percent okay next value probability value okay from your SPSS output ito you can um, determine by looking into the column for SIG sa SPSS yung column na SIG that gives the probability value okay or P value and this is our basis in deciding 
whether to reject or fail to reject our uh, hypothesis. Okay? How do we make our decision on the basis of P? Okay? Okay? When, uh, when P is less than or equal to the alpha or the significance level that you set for your particular study, then HO is rejected. That's the decision rule. The decision rule if P is less than or equal to, sorry, to dis distinguish it from uh, proportion. P value rather less than or equal to your alpha. Alpha is this. Here is significance level. At 95% and at 5% level of significance in your next. Make a decision either to reject or to retain HO and then number six, come up with a conclusion. Is there enough evidence? Is there sufficient evidence for you to, to reject your non-hypothesis? Okay. Now we move on to the level of significance. Level of significance at Amina usually at 5% The significance level of a test is the maximum value of probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is So maximum value of committing a type 1 error. What's type 1 error? Rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is 5%, 1%. That's the significance level. P value, okay? P value, on the other hand, is the probability of getting a value of the test statistic that, that is at, at least as extreme as one representing the sample data, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. The null hypothesis is rejected if, okay, let me underscore, that P value is very small, okay, such as 0.05, that's your alpha or less. So, if P value is less than or equal to alpha, which is the significance level, then HO is rejected. The smaller the P value, the stronger is your evidence against the null hypothesis. Okay? Decision rule when do we reject? Reject if P value is less than or equal to alpha. Else, fail to reject HO. Now, before we identify the test statistics, let's first distinguish and differentiate between parametric tests and non-parametric tests. Daming tests. Okay? Marami tayong tests na ma-encounter na yung hapon. So, parametric versus non-parametric tests. Okay? Take note that for each type of test, there are particular assumptions. Assumptions are made about the distribution of the population. Variable must be at least in the interval scale for parametric tests. So for quantitative set of data, we make use of parametric. Although we can use it also, we can use also non-parametric for okay, quantitative for as long as assumptions are satisfied. So, for parametric tests, collection of statistical tests that do not make assumptions that the data were drawn from a given probability distribution can be used for ordinal and ranked data. What do we mean ordinal data? Ranked data. Okay, you know the difference between interval and scale. Ordinal, some degree of ordering or ranking. Parang satisfaction rating. Ano, ganon. Ordinal yun. Center is better measured by median instead of mean. Now, let's look into okay, the different types of statistical tests. Now, which test should I use? All statistical tests have a set of assumptions like what I said earlier. If any of these assumptions are violated, 
the conclusions based on the analysis may be invalid. Okay? So, you do not, you do not just say, ah, pites to kasi dalawang groups kinocompare. Ah, ano ba? Kasi tatlong groups compare natin. Let's see, there is a significant difference. Okay? Okay, yun ba ang basis mo? Let's find out. Okay, so I have clustered or classified the different tests, test types, statistical tests into three. Okay, that long group po ito. The first group will be for one population. So we're making inferences and generalizations about a population on the basis of a sample taken from the population. So handaan yan ha? One population muna tayo. So, ano mga possible tests that we can make use of? If we analyze a data from a single population, single population muna tayo. For instance, population mean. Okay? One population mean. Okay? Samples of studies, okay? Or of uh, researches under this would be the following. If you are interested about... Um, Finding the mean life expectancy of cancer patients, the mean starting salary of mean starting salary of BS public health graduates, mean body temperature of COVID. So we're talking of just one group. Gaya nito, cancer patients lang. And what parameter are we interested about? Or what uh, parameter is the researcher interested about? They estimating the mean life expectancy. Mean. Okay? Next, number two, only BS public health graduates. And the parameter, mean. Next, only COVID patients, mean. So, one population, mean. What are the different test types or statistical tests that we can make use of? Okay, before we, okay, identify this test, let's look into the assumptions. Okay? Assumptions muna tayo. Parametric versus non-parametric. Dalawa yan. Sa lahat, as we divide the ito into three classifications, one population, maya maya, two populations, and then the third group will be three or more populations or groups. Okay? So for one population, let's look into the parametric and the non-parametric. Now, how do we know whether we are to use parametric tests? These assumptions must be satisfied. Okay? Tatlo. Three assumptions. So, hindi basta-basta. Ah, Z-test na lang po. T-test, no. You have to check on each assumption. Otherwise, gaya nang sabi ko sa inyo kanina, if one assumption is violated, the results are invalid. Okay? Invalid. Now, kaya nga, when you present your data um, in front of a panel, um, the, the usual question is, how did you obtain your sample? How did you obtain your sample? Kasi yung uh, the process of uh, obtaining your sample also determines the validity of your okay, data. Okay? Now, the assumptions for parametric tests are the following. The variable of interest should be measured in at least interval scale, at least quantitative siya. Okay? Quantitative yung data mo. Next, samples must be taken using simple random sampling random sampling. Bakit yung first uh, few slides ko about types of samples? How important is that? Bakit ko ni-review yung sampling techniques sa inyo? Because if your data is obtained in uh, non-probability sampling technique, then we cannot subject it to inferential statistics because all the tests here that we shall be discussing require that the data is obtained by simple random sampling, lahat, whether parametric or non-parametric, okay? So, second assumption, simple random sampling. Kaya tinatanong lagi ng panel yan when you present your researches. 
Okay, how did you, okay, how did you select your sample? Okay, so that's number two. Make sure that this assumption is not violated. Number three, the population should be normally distributed. Okay, remember your bell-shaped curve, the normal curve, it should be normally distributed. So, if the three are satisfied, then we can make use of the following test. The parametric test for one population mean are the following. Z-test and P-test. When do we use Z-test? When? The standard deviation. Take note that this is the sigma. This is your population standard deviation. This D na lang. Walang space. Okay, so if the population standard deviation is known, then we can use Z-test. Otherwise, P-test pag hindi given ang population standard deviation. Uh, let's look into one example. One population mean. Okay? A certain prescription allergy medicine is supposed to contain an average. Uh, let me underscore para may clue. Yan, mean. Average of 245 parts per million. The manufacturer is interested in determining whether the mean concentration mean concentration in a random sample of pills is 245 parts per million or not. Okay, at 5% level of significance. So let's go through the six steps. Number one, stating the hypothesis. Okay, so what is our population here? To a certain type of allergy medicine. Next, what is our parameter? And you measure about that particular population. We are interested, or the, in the researcher or the manufacturer is interested in determining the mean concentration. That's mu. That's the parameter. So the parameter here is yeah, mean Concentration of a certain prescription allergy medicine mu. Therefore, your HO and HA are as follows. Mu is equal to 245 and mu not equal to 245. The next question is, which one will I use? Z test or P test? What's the deciding factor? Go back. What did we say? Z test when this is known. P test if this is unknown. Go back to the problem. We did make mention about standard deviation of the population. Uh, wala naman. Okay, wala. That means, that means, we go for P test. Sure? How sure are you? How sure are we? That this one calls for p test. Okay. Do not assume. Okay? Do not assume. Instead, check the assumptions. Whether the assumptions are satisfied. Three assumptions. Remember the three assumptions. Number one. Number one, the data should at least be quantitative or in the interval scale of satisfied. Number two. The sample is obtained in a random manner. Randomization is um, considered in picking out the sample. And number three, the sample was selected from a normally distributed population. But no, how do we check? Sige, yung una. Okay, yung una, the first, the variable of interest should be at least in the interval scale. Yeah, quantitative siya. So, check. Next, samples must be taken using random sampling. Uh, meron ba? Na mention sa problem? Yes. Ayan, no? A random sample. Okay? A random sample. So, sure. Okay? Samples uh, must be taken using random sampling. Check. Okay? This is also check. But the last condition, last assumption, the population should be normally distributed. Is that stated in the problem? No. Okay, so we have to test. Okay, we test the third. 
do not right away assume that this is for PTES. Porque wala yung, ano, yung standard deviation. Naman wala yung standard deviation of the population. So, PTES. In there, you have to check on normality, which is the third assumption. So, going back, in order for you to make use of any of these two, we have to satisfy the three okay, assumptions. So, hindi pala basta-basta, no? We have to check on the three assumptions. We're done with one, two, eto na lang. Normally, distributed ba? Normally, distributed ba? How do we check? There are several ways of testing normality. Okay? This is in the first, the previous handout, which I uploaded in VENS, normality test, the pertussis, skewness, Z values, the Shapiroville, um, uh, Shapiroville, and uh, using the histogram. So, let's test on the third assumption. Ito, we check on the third assumption muna. Normally distributed kaya. So, a test of normality, the following could be made use of pertussis or Z value, um, skewness and pertussis Z values. Ito, kapag maka-generate ka ng output from SPSS, you can compute for this okay, manually. Now, it should be somewhere in the span, pagitan. Okay, pagitan ni 1.96 to negative 1.96 to 1.96. Okay, negative 1.96 to positive 1.96. Then the Shapiro will test P value should be above 0 0.05. And then histogram, normal, QQ plots, and box plots. And for more info, you can click on this link. Click on this link for more info about okay, testing the normality of the distribution. Now, okay, granting that I have subjected my data into normality tests via SPSS, by SPSS, okay, and uh, the following SPSS output is generated. Okay, the first table shows yan, concentration and so on and so forth. Okay, kunwari lang, because this is, actually I just lifted this as an example, just to show you how to compute the corpuses and skewness uh, Z value. So looking at this, okay, this row, the last two rows, last two rows of the table, uh, show skewness value and pertussis value and the standard error for each. Okay, as much as possible that skewness and pertussis should be closer to zero, very close to zero. Anyway, these are very close to zero. Um, now, to get the Z value, yeah, divide the value I divide the value of each measure by the standard error to get the Z value. Ito, let me highlight this. So for skewness, okay, we have the skewness value of negative 0 0.086 and its standard error is 0.221. For kurtosis, we have the value negative 0.234 and standard error of 0.438. Now, we are to compute for the Z value. The Z value, okay, take note, must be somewhere between negative 1.96 and 1.96. Dapat mag-fall siya dyan. Okay? So, how do we compute for Z? Z value for skewness would be, for skewness, you simply divide the skewness value by its standard error, which is 0 0.221. Get your calculators and simplify. That would give 0 0.086 divided by 0 0.221. Uh, 
this is equal to 0 0.0389 negative. Okay? And then for kurtosis, the Z value for kurtosis will simply be negative 0 0.234 all over its standard error, which is 0.488. This is equal to 0.324 divided by 0.438 is 0, negative 0 0.05. Ah, sorry, point, tama. Pa, 3, 4, 2. Okay? 3, 4, 2. So, take note that these values are within, okay, fall, these values fall within negative 1.96 to 1.96. Kung sa standard or sa normal distribution sana, take note, this is normality test. Kung ito yung normal distribution natin and uh, the Z values, the Z values are negative 1.96, and positive 1.96. Ano yung mga Z values na na-compute natin? Uh, negative 0 0.03. So, this is 0. Negative 0 0.03 is very, very close to 0. Somewhere here. And then the other values, negative 0 0.05 is somewhere here also. So, is it within the span? Yes. So, which means... The data is normally distributed. Although a little, maybe a little kurtotic and skewed, it's still within normal. Normal pa rin siya. So this is our guide. Our guide must be between, somewhere between, negative 1.96 to 1.96. So going back, yung data natin ay normal normally distributed or obtained from a normally distributed population. Now, aside from kurtosis and skewness, we can also make use of the other test, the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. And this is a sample SPSS output. Okay? SPSS output for the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. Okay? The uh, output looks like this from SPSS. Okay, yan. In fact, it gives you to see Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov, Smirnov, and uh, Shapiro will. Pero discuss lang natin si Shapiro will. So, SIG. In SPSS, the p-value is labeled as SIG. So, hanapin nyo ito. Si SIG. That gives the P value. Remember yung decision rule natin kanina? The decision rule is if P value is less than or equal to 0 0.05 bakit 0 0.05? That's the alpha set for this particular problem. Okay? Ayan. 5% level of significance. So yan ang ating alpha. So if P value is less than Okay? Or equal to 0 0.05, reject HO. Okay? Reject HO. Remember that. Ngayon, anong mangyayari? Sa ating Shapiro wheel, significance, okay, or the p-value is 0.781. Now, take note about that for testing normality, okay, a larger p-value indicates that the assumption of normality is satisfied. Bakit? Kasi ang null hypothesis natin for normality test, test of normality, the null hypothesis is this, that the data is normally distributed. The data is normally distributed. Okay? So, if this is the SIG or the p-value, then we fail to reject this. We fail to reject this, which means that, okay, which means that the data is normally distributed. So, let me write that down for test of normality for, so that you won't get confused, normality test 
a larger p value indicates that the assumption of normality is satisfied. Or in short, the significant or the p-value must be greater than alpha. Okay? So here, this one is greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, normality assumption is satisfied. Okay, so satisfied yung normality assumption natin. Okay, satisfied. So tatlong assumption satisfied. Therefore, we can now proceed to e-testing. So ready na tayo mag-e-test. Okay, ayan. Ayan ayan. Okay, since p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means that the assumption of normality is satisfied. So going back, Let, tingnan natin yung tatlong assumptions. Okay? The assumption of yan. Okay na to. Okay? Random sampling and normally distributed. We now proceed to the parametric test T-test. Okay? So, paano na yan? T-test na tayo. Okay? So, ito yung T-test output. Okay, so a sample data is output from SPSS. So all you have to do is again to look for the p-value. P-value. And the p-value sa ang column nyo titignan sa C. Lagi ito sa C. Okay? And take note that the value is 0 .00. 0 0. So what did we say? Decision if p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05 reject HO. Okay? So, ayan na. Reject the null hypothesis. So, conclusion, there is sufficient evidence to say that the mean concentration in PPM of the allergy medication is not equal to 245. Okay? So, now you know when to use P test and when to use Z test. Now, still one population, still one population, but what if, okay, what, what if assumptions are violated? Okay, what if the assumptions are violated? I will not be asking you to compute anymore. Ganito na lang. I'll be, uh, I'll be giving you problems. And then I identify the appropriate test statistic, whether parametric or non-parametric. Okay? Now, we move on to the next. Um, consumer group is investigating a producer of diet meals to examine if its pre-packaged pre protein meals actually contain the advertised 6 ounces of protein in each package. A random sample yielded the following data. Pag na lang muna yan. Is there evidence that the meals do not contain the advertised amount of protein? Run the appropriate test at 5% level of significance. So step number one, stating your mu and uh, your H O and the alternative hypothesis. But first of all, Let's identify the parameter. What is the parameter in this particular problem? And, uh, mean. Mean ito. Mean protein content of diet meals. So your HO and HA would be as follows. HO, mu is equal to 6. And HA, mu is not equal to 6. Wala namang na-mention in the problem stating that the um, random sample has a greater protein content or less than protein content, kaya not equal to. 
Okay? Mu not equal to 6. Now, which test am I going to employ? Walang ma-mention naman dyan na, walang ma-mention na uh, standard deviation. So, Z kaya, T kaya. Okay? So, how shall I, or which among, which between the two will I use? Baka naman ibang test ang kakailanganin dito. So, let's look into the assumptions. Okay? The variable of interest, is it measured in the interval scale? At, uh, at least quantitative siya. Okay, quantitative naman. Okay, 6 ounces. Next, the samples are taken, or should I say the sample, or the data in the sample, are taken using simple random. Meron bang evidence dun sa given? Yes, random sample. Okay? Second, assumption is satisfied. How about number three? Population should be normally distributed. Ito, laging tinetest. Huwag mag assume You know why? When you assume, when you assume, you know what happens? You'll make you'll make an assertion. Okay, never assume. Okay, so you have to go to a normality test. So, using Shapiro-Wilk, again, Shapiro-Wilk, okay, for example, is in object ulit yung aking data into normality test, tapos ito yung output ko sa SPSS. Ang p-value niya is 0 0.017. Anong sabi natin? For normality test, the greater, okay, the greater the p-value, the larger the p-value, okay? The larger p-value is better because that means normality is satisfied. It should be, in fact, greater than 0 0.05, which is the alpha. Ayan, no? It should be greater than 0 0.05 because remember, for normality test, ang ating hypothesis is, okay, the data is normally distributed. Kapag ito ni-reject mo, ibig sabihin yung data mo ay hindi normally distributed. Kaya ang goal natin sa test of normality, ito dapat bigger or greater than 0 0.05. Eh, ang lumabas, 0 0.017. Okay? So, ni-reject natin yung null hypothesis, which means that my data is not normally distributed. So, can I proceed with Z and T Hindi na pwede. Because I have violated the third assumption. Hindi normal, okay? Or the population from which my sample is obtained is not normally distributed. So, I have to resort to another type of test. This time, non-parametric test. Okay? Because I violated one assumption of the parametric test. So, hindi na pwede ang Z, hindi rin pwede ang T. Tingnan natin kung pwede itong non-parametric test na Wilcoxon sign runs test. But like what I said before, lahat ng test may assumptions. So may assumptions din ito. Okay? One, the variable of interest should be at least ordinal scale. No problem because the variable of interest is uh, quantitative. So no problem. Next, number two. Samples must be taken using random something. Yes, it's stated in the problem. So, one, two, check. What? The third. The population should have symmetric distribution. O, oh, meron pa pala. Okay? So, meron pa pala isang condition na kailangan natin. Okay? Masatisfy. Otherwise, we cannot make use also of Wilcoxon sign blanks test. So, we check on the symmetry of the distribution. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Symmetric dapat yung distribution. Ito ba requiring a normal distribution? Not necessary. Okay? Not necessarily normal distribution. What do we mean by symmetric distribution? Pwede kasi ang distribution mo, ganito ang itsura. Okay? Hindi naman normal distributed to. This is not normal distribu uh, normally distributed. Ito rin. Ito nga, rectangular ang graph niya, di ba? Graphical by visual inspection. Pero symmetric ba? Ano ba ngayon na, na intindihan niyo sa word na symmetry? 
symmetric, just like the human body, di ba? It's symmetric with respect to the center. Meaning, the left and the right are mirror images of each other, although not perfect. So, yun yung symmetry. So, kapag ang mga graphics or graphical representation ng data mo, ganito ang itsura, symmetric ito. Because if you look at the left and the right side, you divide this into two, the left side and the right side are somewhat mirror images of each other. Okay? Ito rin. Symmetric rin ba? Yes, because if I divide this graph along the middle, the left and the right are symmetric. Symmetric. Mirror images of each other. So, that satisfies the symmetric distribution. Third, the third assumption. So, ito yung third assumption for non-parametric test. Okay? So, for non-parametric, not necessarily normally distributed, but it should be symmetric distribution. The population should have symmetric distribution. Kung ang graph ng data mo ay parang triangle, ganito, ang klase ng graph niya, symmetric ba yan? Yes. Left and the right sides are mirror images of each other. So if these three are satisfied, at least ordinal, okay, samples are taken using simple random sampling, and your distribution is symmetric, then we can use Wilcoxon sign rank test. Okay. So, granting na nairan na natin yung Wilcoxon sign rank, rank test, okay, and the SPSS output, or the output rather, looks like this. Again, you simply look into the p-value, laging ganon. Look for the p-value because that's our basis in coming up with a decision. That's our deciding factor. Ito o, p-value, which is labeled as C. Okay? P-value. So here, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. It's less than 0 0.05. Therefore, our decision is to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Reject the null hypothesis. So, so far we have, okay, um, discussed about P-test, Z-test, and Wilcoxon sign ground test. So, what's the difference between the two? T-test, Z-test are parametric, whereas Wilcoxon is non-parametric. Now, we proceed to proportion. Okay? Paano kapag ang, ang estimate or ang parameter na we are interested about is proportion but still talking of one population. Okay? One population proportion. So, hindi na mean kundi proportion naman. Okay? For example, okay, just to illustrate, determine if at least at least 75% of CSU students are satisfied with lens. Okay, next, determine if 20, something is wrong here. Determine if 20 out of 30 seated faculty members prefer synchronous online classes. So take note that our eight parameters are Percentages or proportion, 75%, 20 out of 30. So, test of proportion ito. One population test of proportion. What are the tests that we could make use of? Ito, binomial exact test and approximate Z test for larger N. The binomial exact test can be used for, for all cases. Okay? Now, we move on to the next example of one population, one proportion. A survey claims that 9 out of 10 doctors recommend aspirin for their patients with headaches. The test disclaim a random sample of 100 doctors obtained. Uh, of these 100 doctors, 82 indicate that they recommend aspirin. Is this claim accurate? Use alpha equal to 0.05. 
five. Okay. So step number one: state your H O and H A. So H O, our parameter here is no longer mean. Hindi na siya mu kundi proportion. Kasi sa population it's either mu or p. Okay. So p equal to point zero ninety. Saan galing yan? From here, nine out of ten. Express that into percentage. That's ninety percent or in decimal. 0.9 kaya yan. So this is our HO and the corresponding HA P not equal to 0.9. So just to show you the something. Okay. Ayan. So we're moving on to two population. Paano naman pag dalawang groups na? So tapos na tayo sa okay, isang grupo isang population. So, what are the tests? Let's enumerate. So far, we have so one population, so one group. One population, okay, or one group lang. One sample. We have for sorry, when we speak of mean, Okay, population mean, mu, parametric, we have z-test and t-test. And for non-parametric, non-parametric, we have the Wilcoxon sign test. Okay? So, pag ang uh, parameter of interest natin is the mean. Kapag naman proportion, okay? Proportion, proportion, if it's proportion, P, then we have the approximate Z and the linear binomial exactness. Okay? Binomial exactness. So, lima na yan. Now, we move on to next. To the next. Two populations na tayo. So, kung two populations, meron na tayong, okay, two means. Two means. Two population means. So, now we have mu1, population 1, and mu2. Dalawang mean na ang pinakampere natin. In like manner, dalawang proportions na rin. Two proportions. Okay, two proportions, P1 and P2. Okay? So, please take note of this. Gagamitin niyo to when you will be um, writing your bag, um, or should I say, conducting your own researches by next school year, third year. Okay? So, we proceed. Now, before we look into some of the statistical tests for two populations, Let's first define or differentiate between independent samples and paired samples. Why is it important to distinguish whether your samples are dependent and dependent or paired? Okay? Bakit? Because that will dictate also the type of test. Okay? That the type of samples also dictate or determines the type of test be applicable or appropriate to your set of data. So, let's first differentiate between independent samples and paired samples. Independent samples. Sample selected from one population has no effect on how the other sample was selected from the other population. Whereas, paired samples, observation in one sample, in sample one is matched or paired with 
and observation in sample 2. Um, a very common example for paired samples, yung mga test scores nyo for pre-test and post-test. If uh, a teacher would like to check on a new method of teaching, okay, subject you into a pre-testing, okay, pre-testing that would give a set of scores. So that's your first population, pre-test scores, and then um, teach you using the new method or new technique, and then administer a post-test that will generate another population of scores. So, paired view, paired samples. Well, as kung a score ng male versus female, independent yun. Okay, independent. So, scores ng females, scores ng males, independent. Walang epekto yung score ng male sa score ng female. Independent samples yun. Importante that you can distinguish whether your samples are independent or paired because like what I said a while ago, that determines also the appropriate test statistic for your data. Now, examples of independent samples are heights of males and females, medication trial on a control group, and a treatment group. For experimental researches, meron kasi tayong control group and treatment group. Okay? Control, yung the usual. And then treatment, ito yung binibigyan yung, okay? yung treatment. Kaya treatment group. Next, for paired samples, pre-test and post-test samples in which a factor is measured before and after an intervention. Crossover trials in which individuals are randomized to two treatments. And then, same individuals are crossed over to the alternative treatment. Match samples in which individuals are matched on personal characteristics such as age and sex. So, for a particular person, we could get two sets of measure or two measures from a person. For instance, his age and his sex, age and sex, so paired siya because it came from a single person. Yung age niya at yung sex niya, paired or matched sample. Duplicate measurements on the same biological sample. So for example, drawing out uh, blood okay, samples from patients on two occasions and then compare the components. Yan, okay? Duplicate measurements on the same biological samples. Then, any circumstance in which each data point is, or in one sample, is uniquely matched to a data point in the second sample. Can you identify the type of samples in the following? Number one. And here, a specialist wants to examine if the right and the left ears of children have different mean threshold of pain to noise. And we randomly selected 20 children and recorded their maximum level of tolerance to noise for both ears. Okay, is this paired or independent? This is paired or independent? This one is paired or matched. Paired or sometimes related or sometimes matched, okay, matched samples. Whereas the second studies show that Filipinos are, are relatively friendlier, friendlier compared to other races. To verify this, a Japanese national randomly selected 50 Filipinos and other 50 non-Filipinos. Okay, so this is Okay, independent. Okay, independent samples. Now, what are the tests that we can make use of if we would like to compare population means of independent samples? Okay, so ito na yung ating mga tests. For independent samples, we have two means, population means. 
mu1 and mu2. And our parameter of interest is the difference between the, the two. Okay, what are or how does the data look like for independent samples? The array or the notation of data looks like this. So this is from the first group. Okay, this is from the first group and this is from the second group. Okay, now you might be asking me, is the sample size for group 1 necessarily the same as the sample size for group 2? Hindi. Remember, independent samples naman siya, hindi siya paired samples. So, pwedeng magkaiba ang sample size for the two groups. Now, what are the test statistics that we can make use of for comparison of two means, top two population means? We have Z-test, pulled T-test, non-pulled T-test, or the Welch test. Okay, this is the other name for non-pulled T-test. But before we can decide uh, on which test statistic to use, again, we have to check on the assumptions. Ulit, yung assumption natin for parametric test, okay, at least quantitative yung data, interval scale, the sample is obtained by random sampling, okay? And the population should be normally distributed. Take note that we are comparing two populations now. So, you check on the normality of the two populations. Both populations must be normally distributed, okay? Yung dalawa, dapat normally distributed. So, i-check ulit natin yung mga assumptions. Kung isa violated, then that means we cannot make use of any of this. So let's look into um, the non-parametric counterpart. Okay? So for the non-parametric counterpart, meron tayong tinatawag na man bitney test. Okay? When can we use this? Again, the data must be at least ordinal. Ordinal, quantitative. The sample is obtained by random sampling. The distribution of the populations must have the same shape. Ito ang difference. Kanina, for parametric, each population, di ba dalawang grupo na tayo? Ito na tayo eh. Two populations na kinakumpiyan natin. Anong sabi ng third assumption? Each of the populations should be normally distributed. I might be asking me, how do we check on normality? Again, subject it to normality test, either shapiro will or your kurtosis skewness or colmogoro. Okay? Now we move on. Ano ito? The distributions of the population must have the same shape. Okay? The populations, the distribution of the populations must have the same shape. Okay, this does not require normally distributed population but the same shape. So, kung skewed to the left yung population 1, dapat skewed to the left din yung population 2. Kung skewed to the right yung population 1, skewed to the right yung dapat yung population 2. Kapag lahat yan na satisfy, then we can proceed to using the man with me this. Okay, so when can we use this? For comparing Two means from independent samples. Okay, so independent. So, it's sulat natin. Two means, okay, two proportions, but particularly mentioned independent. Okay, samples. From independent samples, we can make use of, okay, z test. Here we could use Z test, pulled T test, or non pulled T test, Welch test. Now going back, ayan. when do we use Z test? If I fail to mention about this, if the population variance is known, Z test. If the population variance is unknown, we could use either pulled t-test or non-pulled t-test. The other name for non-pulled t-test is Welch test. Okay? Checking on the variances. 
If equal variances, we use full pages. Okay? If the variances are unequal, we use the Welch test. Now, meron bang test for checking or to check on the variances? Meron. Mamaya, discuss natin. Okay? And math with me for non-parametric. So, sulat din natin dito. These are parametric. And then the man with me for man parametric. These are, I hope you can still read this, parametric. These are parametric tests. Or ilagay na lang natin sa next page. So for two populations, okay, independent, Two populations na independent samples. Okay? Two populations comparing okay, new one and new two. We have the non-parametric test. A parametric test first before the non-parametric test. We have the following parametric test. Z test. Full. T test. And the non full T test. When do we use this? If this is known. Okay, this is no. This to when is unknown. Okay, unknown. However, this is particularly used when the variances are equal. Okay, the variances are equal. And this one when the variances are unknown. Okay, and equal variances. This is also named as the Welch. Yes. Okay. Next, kapag non-parametric, if the, the assumptions for parametric tests are not satisfied, and we check on the non-parametric counterpart, non-parametric, Test for comparison of two means is you have the man with me test. Okay, so man with me test. So now we have five from the previous, lima ito. Okay, from the previous we have one, two, three, four, five. Now we have six. 7, and 8. And then, 9. Ngayon, paano naman kapag proportion, hindi na means? Ito ang kinocompare niya, means. Paano naman kapag comparing two populations, still independent samples? Okay. Two, same, two groups or two populations, still independent samples, Okay, independent samples and what are we trying to compare? Proportions. Comparing P1 and P2. Ano yung mga test? So let's look into that. So for comparison of two proportion, ha, population means tayo. So example muna tayo. Just to illustrate, yan, in medicine, one to the question or one question in medicine has the quality of life improved for patients who took drug A as opposed to patients who took drug B. So this is comparing between two independent samples. Okay, two independent groups. Okay, two independent samples. What are these groups? Patients who took drug A and patients who took drug B. Next, in sociology, 
are men more satisfied with their jobs? A job satisfaction of men versus women independent samples yon. Okay? Comparing two population means. Okay? Independent sample. Are foxes in one specific habitat larger than in another? Next, in economics, is the economic growth of developing nations larger than the economic growth of the first world? In marketing, does customer segment A spend more on groceries than customer segment B? So these are examples, okay, showing or under comparison of two independent samples. Next. Okay. Related. Paano naman kapag ang sample mo ay related? Iba na naman yun. Okay? So, kanina, at proportion, nakalimutan natin ang proportion. Okay. Okay. So, let's proceed to two population means which are related. Two population two populations related samples or two groups related na yung samples mo so just the same comparing means so just the same meron tayong new one and new two. Ang difference lang ngayon, ang ating means or ang ating sample ay related. Related sila or match or pair. Kanina, gaya ng example, uh, job satisfaction of men versus women, independent samples yun. Ngayon, related samples. So what are the tests that we can make use of? So for related samples, the data array notation would look like this. These are from the first group. Okay? And from the second, take note that pares yan. They are matched. So we are interested in finding out the difference. Okay? The difference between the B1, B2, B3, and, and so on. Now, what test can we make this of if our samples are Related. Dalawa, ha? Dalawa. Na related or matched or pares. The following parametric test could be applied. Ito lang. Paired sample t-test. Okay? Paired sample t-test. Again, check on the assumptions. At least interval or quantitative. Check. Random sampling. Meron ba? Yes. So, random sample. And then the third assumption, the pair difference variable must be normally distributed. So, hindi na ito yung normally distributed, kundi yung difference nila. Okay, kanina dun sa independent samples, sabi natin sa independent samples, the uh, each population, each of the two populations must be normally distributed. But for paired samples, paired samples, the difference, ito, the difference should be normally distributed. Ayan, the paired difference variable must be normally distributed or sample size is large enough to apply the central limit theorem. So if all of these are satisfied, then we can use paired sample p -S. Now, what about the parametric, non-parametric test for comparison of two means from related samples? The variable of interest should be at least in the ordinal scale. Okay? Quantitative. Paired samples must be taken within using random sampling. Lagi ito. Take note that number two is always okay, uh, part of the assumptions. The number three, the paired difference variable must have Symmetric distribution. Okay? And I think I discussed this a while ago already, so no need to discuss further. Symmetric distribution. Okay? Ang difference lang dito, the pair difference must be normally distributed in order for you to make use of parametric tests. But, 
paired Wilcox sum test requires that the distribution, the paired difference variable, have a symmetric distribution. So that's the difference. Okay? So for example, illustrations. The following are, okay, illustrations or examples under comparison of two population means in which the samples are related. Comparing the mean weight of gym instructors before and after intermittent testing. Yan. And then, uh, comparing test scores of workshop participants before and after training. And then, comparing hearing loss of respondents left and right here. So, take note that the, um, the data are matched or paired. Like, for instance, yan. One measure from the left ear and another measure from the right ear for a single person. Ito naman, ito, before, okay, weights before and weights after a month of intermittent fasting. So, ito, related samples. Ano yung mga pwedeng test na gamitin natin dito? We have the Pierre Wilcoxon sign round test. For as long as the three assumptions here are satisfied. Okay? So, so, let's list down now. Comparing means in which the samples are related for parametric, parametric test. It is paired. Ayan, the parametric test for this is A. Okay. Paired sample two test. Paired sample T test. And its non parametric counterpart, non parametric test for testing means from related samples is paired Wilcoxon sign. Test. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Pair example T, pair Wilcoxon sign round test. Next, how about um, proportions for independent samples? I think hindi ko na ituloy kanina, no? Populations, yan. Comparing populations, or should I say proportions? Comparing. Uh, proportions okay, comparing proportions from two independent samples let's look at um, the example okay, this is one example comparing proportions uh, between male female male female who wants to work collaboratively and those who prefer to work individually. So, may proportion tayo. Two populations. What are the two populations? Independent of each other. We have male, female. So, dalawang grupo, independent of each other. Okay? And then, what are the proportion? Proportion of male and female students who prefer collaborative work. Proportion of female employees who prefer collaborative work. Work. Okay? So, ito a sample of comparison of two proportions from independent samples. So, what tests are we going to use? What tests are we going to use for comparing? Yan. Fisher's exact test and approximate z-test for large n. So, parametric test. Fisher's, okay, Fisher's exact test and approximate, approximate Z test. Okay. Next, we're almost, uh, we're almost done. Kasi two proportions naman na tayo. Okay. 
So this is how um, your Fisher's exact test looks look like. Yan. And then fail to reject because p value is greater than 0 0.05. Okay. Now we proceed to the next. Para naman kapag related samples, we have the test, McNeimar's test. McNeimar's test. Now let's illustrate. Okay? Related ba to? Bakit naging related sample? So let's see. A random sample of, of students were selected to determine if they have high stress levels or not. When the students were asked to do a set of physical activities every morning. After a month, the same set. The same set. So from the same set of students, two sets of data were gathered before and after. Okay? Stress level before and after. Kaya, related ito. Okay? Related samples. But what are we talking about? Are we talking of mean? No. Proportion. Ilan. Frequency. Kaya, comparing two proportions. Comparing two proportions in which the samples are related. So, anong test ang gagamitin dito? We have the McNeimar's test. Okay? I will not discuss it further anymore. Just say ito lang. This you should know how to identify identify the appropriate test. Okay? Last! Okay, last for this afternoon. Three or more populations. Or three or more groups. Uh, ito na yung very familiar sa inyo na ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. Okay, so comparing three or more population means the samples are independent. So your data would look like this. These are from sample 1, these are from sample 2, and these are from sample T. If there are T, Okay, T number of samples or uh, T groups. Okay, so when comparing three or more populations, look into the following assumptions for parametric tests. At least the variable should be of interval scale, random sampling. Each population should be normally distributed. Okay, lagi ang tatlo. Plus, the variances of the population must be equal. So, hindi basta-basta ang gumamit ng ANOVA. No, maraming kailangan i-test. Maraming, maraming assumptions. Kapag na-violate ang isang assumption, then we cannot proceed to applying the analysis of variance or F-test. Okay, so the fourth assumption requires that the variances must be equal. And we have this test for equality of variances, the Levin's test. Okay, Levin's test should be above 0.05 and the Bartlett's test. Okay, if you want to know further about how Levin's test is conducted, you please click on this link and we'll have a clear explanation. It will give you a clear explanation on how Levin's test is, okay? conducted to check on equality of variances. So comparing three or more population means in which the samples are independent, we could make use of the following F-test, analysis of variance. And then we conduct also a post hoc test which uh, um, is named Tukey Student Ties Range Method. If it's non-parametric, then we can use the Kruskal-Wallis test and the post-hoc post test for that is the Dunn's test. Okay, just uh, an example. This is the last anyway. So comparing three or more population means make sure that the samples are independent. Otherwise, if the samples are not independent, that calls for another type of test. So, lagi kong inuulit, hindi basta-basta mag-decision. Porque alam mo na ang ANOVA mo, ANOVA na, hindi. You have to check on the assumptions. Okay? If, okay, the four assumptions are satisfied, you can proceed to using ANOVA. Otherwise, you can check the 
right, to the skull valleys, which is its non-parametric frontal part. For example, it is of interest to compare three swimming strokes, breast stroke, back stroke, and butterfly. Then swimmers from a professional team will randomly, oh yan, lagyan natin ulit ng mga uh, underlining mga keywords. Randomly selected, okay, time to finish, so quantitative yung data, okay, and three strokes. Rest stroke, let this be the first population backstroke, and the butterfly. So, tatlong grupo. Tatlong grupo, ano, let's use the abbreviation breaststroke, backstroke, and butterfly. So, ito, meron siyang sariling new. Ito, meron nim 2. Bakit nim ang ginamit ni ma'am? Kasi ito, time. Average time to finish. Okay? New 3. So, ilan ang kinocompare na Ito, tatlong means, tatlong averages sa iba't ibang klase ng stroke. Breast stroke, new one. Okay? Back stroke, new two. And butterfly, new three. Okay? So, what is our appropriate HO here? Okay? HO, because we are in comparison, comparing, comparing the three, then our new would be new one, is equal to mu2, walang difference, equal to mu3. There is no significant difference between and among the time to finish a 100 meter leg, uh, whether it be it breast stroke, back stroke, and butterfly. Eh yung HA natin, I mean HA natin, that at least, at least one mean is different from the rest. Okay? Different from the rest. Okay? So, may isa or dalawa na iba. Siguro, at least eh. At least one mean is different from the rest. Or magkakaiba talaga silang tatlo. So, ang question ngayon, ang test ang gagamitin natin. Check the assumptions. How many assumptions are there? Four. Okay, four assumptions. Number one, first, quantitative ba si data mo? Yes, time yan eh. Okay, number two, okay, is your sample selected from or using a simple random? Yes, randomly selected. Next, yung ating bang patlong grupo ay normally distributed? Yung tatlo? normally distributed, i-check mo. Check natin using normality test. Okay? So, assumption number one, let me copy si assumption number copyin natin. Check on the four assumptions. Slagay natin dito. Um, so, Yeah. Okay, so ito yung ating assumption. So number one, check na ba yan? Okay, yes. Quantitative, time. Independent samples, okay? Using random sampling, yes. Ito na lang, ah, isi-check natin. Okay, yung third and fourth. Normality and uh, equality of variances. So, let's see. So, for normality, this is the test. Ilang populations ang isi-check natin? Tatlo. Yung tatlong klase ng, ng strokes. Back stroke, uh, breast stroke, and butterfly. So, using the same test that we have made use of in the previous examples, the shapiro of normality test. What did we say? P should be greater than 0.05. Okay, so ito, point, uh, 0 0.135, 0 
0.4899. Okay? This means that the assumption of normality is satisfied. Okay? Normality, the assumption of normality is satisfied. Check. Satisfied. Yung four equal variances. Meron pang test dun, yes. The Bartlett test of homogeneity, homogeneity, homogenous, homogeneity of variance or equal variance. Ayun din siya. P-value of, okay, 0.6426. So, check, okay, equal variances. So, all the assumptions are satisfied. Now, we can proceed to F-test. Okay? F-test or ANOVA. F-test. So, sa F-test, this is the SPSS output. Again, look into the column for SIG. This gives the P-value. Again, our P-value must be less than or equal to 0 0.052. Reject H O. Okay, this is very small, or this is small, uh, relatively small compared to a point zero five. Therefore, we reject H O. So our decision is reject H O. Conclusion: There is sufficient evidence to say that at least one swimming stroke yielded a different mean time, mean time to finish a one hundred meter leg from the Okay, should we stop here? Should we stop here? No. Okay, we have to find out which among the three groups uh, contributed to the difference. Aling bang nagkaiba? Saan ba nagkaiba? Okay, namita natin ang post hoc test. At yung post hoc test, yung 2K. 2K, okay, post hoc test. Then, take note, may nagkaiba sa breaststroke at sa backstroke. Look at this uh, p-value. So, the mean time to finish the leg differs between breaststroke and backstroke. In like manner, for backstroke and butterfly, ayan, the mean time, mean time to finish a 100 meter leg significantly differs. And so that's it. Okay? So this is how we do analysis of variance. I think this is the last slide. Okay, this is the last slide for this afternoon. So we have how many tests? Okay, 2K for postdoc analysis. F-test or ANOVA, shapiro wheel Bartlett test for homogeneity of variances. Then we have, no, we did not show, but Kruskal Willis could be used when the data for, uh, for non-parametric tests. Okay? Yeah. And the post-hoc analysis for Kruskal Willis is done. I think we could end up with this. Sobrang loaded na ang ating hapon. Okay, so for your assignment, um, please answer Lang. Slides number 22 and 23. Okay? But I still have to um, set the time and date for your unit test. Okay? So please agree among yourselves uh, when will I be giving or when will I administer the unit test okay? to your group within this week. Because by next week, you will have your final examinations. Are there questions at this point? If there are questions, please feel free to 